issue of family. So a couple weeks ago, we were driving down to Madison for a doctor appointment, and we were just, me and Tina, we, me and Tina, were just chit-chatting about life, and I was like, man, I don't know, last time I did a sermon series on family. She's like, you should do it. And I was like, I don't want to. She's like, fine. <laughs> so she won. <laughs> I had planned to schedule on doing a sermon series on the book of Daniel, and I probably read through that thing like three or four times, and it just never like clicked, got my attention, got excited about it. And I was like, all right, I'm not. So we're going to do a sermon series on, on family. And so we're going to do big picture, small picture, 3,000 foot view, microscope stuff. Um, there'll be times where I preach in generalities. There's going to be times where I'll probably use our own personal experiences and family life and all that kind of stuff, which will be interesting. I'll do my best. No, I won't throw any of my kids directly under the bus or I got to take them out to eat. That's the deal. So maybe I'll be taking them out to eat a lot. We'll find out. Um, and here's why, though. I honestly think the number one issue in our world for us people is what happens inside our own homes. Like the number one thing that we got to take care of is what happens inside our own home. If our own homes are dysfunctional, nothing else matters. Like that's numero uno of everything that, that we should be dealing with is what inside our own home. So we are. We're going to talk about parenting. We're going to talk about marriage. We're going to talk about how to talk about the birds and the bees and like all the things that get uncomfortable, right? Because I'm like, gosh, dang it. Like, right? Like all the things. Why? Because I don't know if you realize this, God talks about all the things. Jesus talks about all the things. We have lots of scripture on all of the things. But today we got to figure out why we're going to talk about this like 3,000 foot view. And honestly, what the reason why is simply this, is we are guaranteed to go through crap. Like I don't really know how else to put it, right? Storms will hit you. Like life will hit you in the face some way, somehow. Something's going to happen in your life that you didn't plan on, that you didn't expect. You don't know how to handle it. And you're like going, now what? There's times where we cause things in our own life, and there's times that we didn't. And if we don't have a solid foundation of who we are and why we do what we do and why we base the things that we do, things crumble really fast. And Jesus, is pro Jesus promises these things. So Matthew chapter 7 is the first section of verses I'm going to talk about. And then Psalms 128 will be after that. And then you get me for the rest of it. Here's what Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27 has to say. Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the stream, streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. And yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But anyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice it's like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. Can I be completely honest with you? I've seen enough people be foolish and crash and burn. I've seen enough people be foolish and crash and burn, and they function in life for a long time. They were told by the guy who built their house that it was built on a rock, and it just wasn't. They've been lied to. They were told something. They believed something. So many things happened. And it just, it did not go well. There's a couple questions I think that we all have to ask ourselves in our life. And one of them is, you know, what is the story we want to write? But I think we also have to ask the question, what is the story we don't want to write? Because we all have stories, and we all almost <laughs> can almost look at people's lives right now and go, oh, I don't want my life to be like that. I don't want my life to end up like that. I want my life to look like that, whatever the case is. What do you want your story to write? Someone to tell your story, if you're going to write it all out, what do you want to actually say? And the biggest part of our stories is the things that happen inside our own homes. And we have to make sure what are we actually talking about? What are we saying? What are, what are the things? You know, it's interesting because church world, <laughs> church world, we get really kind of caught up in memorizing scripture. And I love memorizing scripture. I think memorizing scripture is a big deal. It should be a big deal. You should know what the Bible says. But Jesus is like, it's one thing to know it. It's another thing to live it. The Pharisees knew scripture. They like knew what it said. They didn't live it. My concern isn't just with people knowing what the Bible says. My main concern is that people actually live this thing out. 
outside the four walls. You're in church for an hour a week. So 99.9% .9 of your life exists outside the church. I'm way more concerned that everything happens outside of the church than inside the church. Here's what it says in Psalms chapter 128. I about this fear of the Lord. Look what it says. It says this, How joyful are those who fear the Lord. That is not something we think of very much. Joyful in fear of the Lord. Or joyful in just fear in general. All who follow his ways, you will enjoy the fruit of your labor. Awesome. How joyful and prosperous you will be. Your wife will be like a fruitful grapevine flourishing within your home. Your children will be like vigorous young olive trees as they sit around your table. This, that is the Lord's blessing for those who fear him. May the Lord continue to bless you from Zion. May you see Jerusalem prosper as long as you live. That's the city in the area. Right, may you live, live to enjoy your grandchildren, and may Israel have peace. Honestly, I think what it's trying to get across is the best thing. The best thing for our city, our communities, the people around us is to have strong families. The best thing to have a strong family is to have a strong marriage. The best thing to have a strong marriage is to have a strong soul. We don't have a lot of people with strong and healthy souls. We don't have enough people with strong and healthy souls. We don't have enough people with strong and healthy marriages, and we don't have enough strong and healthy families. We have a lot of people who are active, but they're not very strong. So many of our issues in our own society, I'll put, goes back to men not leading the way we should. Just look at incarceration rates. Fatherless homes. Right? It, look at, I, you know, anytime I say things, you want to like head your bet because there's always the exception to the rule, right? But the majority of issues that we see in schools with young people is because they come from dysfunctional homes and fathers aren't doing their jobs and not leading the way that God has called fathers to lead. When you see strong men leading their families the way God should call them to lead, you see successful kids and households. Um, John Phillips, he's a, he did the commentary, or one of them, that I read on Psalms 128, and here's what he had to say. It says, The welfare of the state depends on the welfare of the home, and the welfare of the home depends on the spiritual condition of the home. Unspiritual fathers will produce unsaved children, and unsaved children will build an un." stable state. That was not written recently, people. Okay, That is not a modern thing. It holds true. What we see is we see people not leading the way we should, but not the foundation of the way we should. So what should be the foundation? It says, joyful are those who fear the Lord. Joyful are those who fear the Lord. I'll tell you what, that phrase doesn't get talked about. When we think family, we do not think fear of the Lord. That is not the first thing that comes to mind. We have a negative connotation with the word fear. We fear things. We get scared of things. We have a, a world where anxiety and stress and worry rule the day. Uh, I, I heard a phrase that that's, I like. It. it says this. It said, if God didn't give it to you, you ain't got to keep it. It's like, how many times do we hold on to things that God didn't give us, but we're holding on to them and keeping them anyways because they're comfortable and we like it? I like, let's just be hard for a Just Here's a warning, okay? When, last sermon series is on the Holy Spirit, big picture teaching series. This one's family much more personal, much more intimate, which means I have a very good chance of making you mad a lot easier. <laughs> Don't run away. <laughs> okay? We like our medications. We label ourselves around our issues. It's who I am. We put labels on things, it becomes who we are. We like it. We like to hold on to things that God never gave us, that God didn't want for us in our lives, but we're comfortable with them because we've, it's become our identity. Why are we holding on to stuff? Our past hurts, pains, relationships, so many things. We hold on to so many things. Uh, I think this, there's a holy fear of God that I think we have to have that we don't have. Uh, God's like a powerful lion and as gentle as a can. All mixed into one. There is a, oh my gosh, what's his name? There's a couple of people on Instagram that are awesome. Like, 
lion trainers. And there's a, and he like hangs out with lions. It's insane to watch. It's crazy. But he built a relationship with these guys, and it's like, you're nuts. I'm not going near them. But they, they're soft like a kitten. God puts, God, storms happen. God doesn't cause them. They just happen. They're guaranteed. It's a promise. Hey, anybody ever um, been in like a really big storm? Like a nasty one? Or like thunder like shakes you? It's the ultimate we are all human experience, right? Um, you can have Elon Musk money and still crap your pants. You know what I mean? Like it is the ultimate leveling thing where it's like, dude, did you just, the earth shook from whatever thunder or lightning strike. It is the ultimate we're all human experience. Storms in life is the ultimate human experience. And God is like, I am the only foundation that you can possibly have. And Jesus is constantly warning people, storms are going to happen. Where is your foundation of your life? Storms will happen inside of your home. What is your foundation? Storms are going to happen in your marriages. What is your foundation? You can't keep storms from happening. The question is, is what are you going to base your life on? He's like, you better not just know what I say. You better actually live this thing out. Men better start stepping up to the plate and lead their family by serving them well. Wives, serve and respect your husband. Trust him in his godly leadership. Spouses better give themselves completely to each other, not hide issues and conversations and feelings and actions, and actually be one with each other. Kids are to honor and respect their parents and they've got to give an authority in their lives. You know, it's always interesting whenever I see young people, you know, I, I see young, I've heard like eight-year-olds, by the way, like going off on politicians. I'm like, yeah, because that guy knows. You know what I mean? It's like, no, what are they hearing? They're hearing the parents in the home ripping apart it. I've legit heard kids ripping apart principles. You know why? The parents are at home ripping apart the principle. That's a disaster. Honor respect the authority in people's lives. Build relationships with people. God is the ultimate authority. So whether we're talking about healthy marriages, healthy families, healthy souls, it starts with God being the ultimate authority, period. It's not just enough to know his words. We have to live them out. It starts with having a healthy soul, and then it moves to having a healthy marriage, and then it begins to have a healthy family. Jesus told us one thing to know my words, it's another thing to put them into practice. We have a society that loves to pull us in every little direction. We can get mad and we can get worked up about whatever. The foundation of why we believe what we believe, the foundation of why we stand on certain principles and certain things isn't because society or somebody on social media told us we have to or some Christian influencer called himself a pastor and he's yelling and screaming, or Tucker Carlson, or whoever. Like, I can, I can go on and list all, the, all of them if you'd like. It's because of the foundation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why. That's where it comes from. Because if we go with society, society changes. 20 years ago, it was political suicide to talk about certain things or to have certain views. Now it's very common. So societies change. Scripture doesn't. God's Word never changes. So we don't, no matter what identity issues we're dealing with, or this is what this society goes, this is what men are like now, and this is what women should be like, this is how you should raise your kids now, and this is how you should deal with this, and this is how they're made, and blah, 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 and just... The million different things that we will probably address because they're going to come out. It's at the center of it, it's God. It's God. He placed the sun, moon, and the stars in the sky. He created the galaxies far, far away, right? Like he holds the Milky Way in his hands and more, right? Like you do realize this. You have the sun, right? I should have stuff out here, right? You have the sun, you have the moon, or the earth, and the moon. Right? The earth orbits around the sun. It spins. The moon orbits around the earth. It's all set up. Science. Go back to school. It's great. Not everybody knows this. 
It's an inside joke. I'm going to make fun of somebody. <laughs> That's what you do when you get a microphone and things happen. You know what I mean? Like, just like us. God, the God who created that. And by the way, we are living in a default earth. So you go to the mountaintops, you go to the beach, you see the ocean, you see these things, you see the wonder of God's glorious beauty and His creation. A sunrise this morning, the sunset, and all the things. It's by default. This We're existing in His grace-filled world that we botched so bad, He destroyed it and literally started all over again. And we're living in it. It's called the flood, and it's Genesis, and you can read it all. But the guy who God, who holds all the galaxies in his hands, is the God that said, I'm going to send my son to die on a cross for us, and so I can have a personal relationship with you. That's God. That's the God that we put our faith and our trust in. That's the God that we go, all right, my kids are going to be okay at the park. That's, that's the God we're trusting in. So we talk about the fear of the Lord. And a firm foundation, you know, the song, The Firm Foundations, we read the story in Matthew about building your house on the rock. That's the rock. That's the rock. There is no need to worry. When you know, when you're basing everything off of that foundation, that's as strong as you can possibly get. You can't be wavered. Because God loves us so much. That's the God that we serve. We understand that. That's completely different. But what we like to do, because we're human beings, is we like to have a little bit of Scripture, have our own ideas, and go, I really don't want to act like that. Why? Because I'm a little lazy this morning. I don't want to help. Why? Because I just don't want to. But I read a book that said I should be like this. <laughs> but this guy said I should look this way. This is, this is what it really means to be a man. This is what it really means to be a husband, to be a wife. So we have to establish a baseline of who sets the standard. Otherwise, every single thing I say from here in the next three, four weeks, who knows, um, will just be TED Talks. And you can get a line and watch a lot of great TED Talks. TED Talks are actually very valuable. A lot of them are great. But I'm not a very good TED Talker. Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. God created families, God created parenting, God created marriages. If we don't start with God, everything else falls apart. Everything else falls apart. This is why the fear of the Lord and understanding where our foundation is should be the start of everything. Um, there's five F's that I've found in life. Five F's are this, your family, your future, your feelings, your finances, and your faith. These five dictate your life and how it goes. Everything that happens is wrapped around these five things. And these five things are all talked about in Psalms 128. Feelings. It says, the blessing of those who fear him. Did you know that blessing, that word actually could be translated as happy, happy? Like two happies, not just one happy, two happies. Right? Remember like 15 years ago when Duck Dynasty was popular? Remember that their 15 minutes of fame? Now his daughter's just trying to get 15 minutes of fame. Um, right? One of the old guys was happy, happy, happy all the time. That's all I remember about it. I don't remember much about the show. Watched it like five times. I don't know. I didn't get, I, I'm not going to lie, guys. I don't understand the big deal of that. Like if you're a big Duck Dynasty fan, sorry. Like I wasn't. But the old guy would just go happy, happy all the time. It's like a double happy. And then it talks about you will be like her as long as you live. All these things in that, in that, ver in that chapter. Keep reading chapter 128 of Psalms. It's future tense. It's future tense, not just current. It's future. Family. We're, we're going to start to get into the nitty gritty now. Don't get mad. Um, families beyond just having kids at home. If your family starts when Johnny's born, Johnny's the center of your family. That's a dangerous place to be. Right? Our center, families, I, when I read all the Bible, and I don't read it every week, all of it, right? Or some more parts of it, I'm not that good of a reader. Um, 
families honestly start when two people start making decisions based off of each other. And biblically speaking, that should be when two people get married. That should be the start of family. Because that's when you start to go, what about this person? Family starts when you start seeing things from a different point of view and you start orbiting your life around somebody else outside yourself. And God says, honestly, that marriage, that's why it's a vow, it's a covenant. Marriage is a vow and covenant before God, not a commitment that you make to the government. Like it's a huge deal. The reason why we always struggle with marriage issues is because we now view marriage as a way we file taxes and have bank accounts and insurance stuff. It's not. It's a vow you make before God. Those are two different things. Maybe we should have due to two different terms. Just saying, I don't know. But what we need to do is we need to start basing things off the foundation of Scripture and off of God again, and we do that. That's family. That's family. We can't begin our family life around Johnny or Susie. And what I do is I see people basing their lives around Johnny and Susie. Is there any Johnny or Susies here? I just came up with two names. I don't want to make anybody mad. Okay. So if you have a Johnny or Susie in your life, they're going to get me fun of quite a bit. Let me know. I'll, I'll change up names. Uh-huh. Serious, I will. I don't care. Um, when we make decisions based off of Johnny or Susie, it's dangerous. Because here's what we hear, both inside the church and outside the church. This isn't a faith thing. This is a human being thing. Well, I just wanted Johnny to be happy. I just want them to be successful. I just want the best for them. I just... I, w- I want them to have every opportunity that they can possibly have. And I'm not saying those are actually bad phrases or bad things as parents, not at all. But those are bad foundations to live your life on. Because when a storm happens, now what? Now what? It's also why <laughs> you're going to have people who are 35 years old still live in their parents' basement. <laughs> why? Their life was based around Johnny or Susie. And so mom and dad don't actually want Johnny or Susie to move out because their life was based off of them. And if they leave, now they don't have their life. What is their life going to be based off of anymore? Um, C.S. Lewis wrote a book, and I haven't read the whole thing. I get bits and pieces of it from some of the commentaries have, that I have. It's called Grief Observed. And I didn't know this about him. I don't know very much about C.S. Lewis. Lewis. Some people are like obsessed with the guy. He's an author. He's just like, whatever, cool author. Really good with words, right? Probably really good with words. But he has this book called Grief Observed, and it was about his life. And if you don't know, C.S. Lewis didn't get married until he was in his 60s. And he was only married for a couple years. And this is what he had to say about life. And what I'm trying to get across is the point when Psalms 21, 28 is trying to get across. Then we do things God's way, life's better. Life is better for our souls. Life is better for our marriages. Life is better for our households and parenting and all together. Look at what it says. This is his quote. We feasted on love every mode of it. Psalm and Mary, romantic and realistic. Sometimes as dramatic as a thunderstorm and sometimes as comfortable and unemphatic as putting on your soft slippers. No cranny of our heart or body remained unsatisfied. Holy smokes. Anyways, uh, it's his words, not mine, okay? If you get uncomfortable, don't blame me. But there you go. She was my pupil and my teacher, my subject and my sovereign, my trusted comrade, friend, and shipmate my fellow soldier and my mistress, but at the same time, all that any man friend has ever been to me. When God is at the center of everything we do, everything's better, and no amount of money, no amount of success can ever get you that. It can ever get you that. Whether it's from our spouse or our kids, activities, hobbies, or more, when God's at the center, everything is better. Every, everything that comes with family, guys, there's pressure. Let's just face it. There's pressure. Pressure to have 
the marriage or pressure to put out what you think marriage should be like on social media so everybody knows you have a successful marriage. Pressure to get your kids in every little event they can possibly be in. Pressure. Because if you're not, if you're not, you're not giving them a chance to succeed. But, but you never know. I don't know what it's like outside of sports world, but I'll tell you this. I think it's 3 to 5% of athletes who will play varsity sports will ever play college athletics at any level. D1, D2, D3, NAIA, JUCO, all of the above. There's a whole lot. There's a whole lot. So maybe, just maybe, we better make sure that God is at the center of what we have. Because I hate to tell you, when storms hit the fan, and it will, Johnny's and Susie's basketball careers in third grade are not going to matter. You know what I mean? There's pressure. There's pressure. It's a dangerous slope. It's a dangerous slope we play if we don't base our life off of the foundation of actually living out Scripture. We can know it all day. People are like, well, I know what it says in Proverbs 31, but I ain't going to be that. Well, just read it. It's probably a little different than what you actually realize. She's like an entrepreneur. She's a go-getter. and I ain't going to be a husband. I ain't going to want to do that. Hold on a second. We can get really selfish and really greedy. My goal throughout this whole sermon series is so that when storms hit, because they will hit, is that you actually stand strong. Because that house that we read about, man, that thing can shift. You read that story and you just see the, you see the hurricane moving the thing. You see the thing just wobbling. And it's standing Strong. What we like to do, what's easy to do, is we like to serve our own egos. We like to do things ourselves. Here's what I have found, unfortunately. There's a lot of people, not everybody, there's a lot of people. Their lives are built on sand. They were told it was built on a rock. It's not. It was built on religion. Religion's on a rock, by the way. So it's built on religious stuff. Not Jesus. And little storms come up and swept away. Some are built on sand, and you don't even need a storm to come up, unfortunately, anymore. You just need a little bit of rain. It's not even a storm. It's just rain. Just rain. In fact, it doesn't even need to rain in your own house anymore. We love other people's dramas so much that it just has to rain in somebody else's house. And it messes up your whole life. It's not even in your own home anymore. It's Cousin Johnny's. And you're in a tizzy all week long. Why? I don't know. But you like Cousin Johnny's drama. It's raining in his house. It's not even storming in his house. It's just raining. And your life is falling apart. <laughs> We're going to have a barbecue after this. <laughs> it's not raining. And you're a mess. Your house is built on sand. Your house is built on sand. I don't want it to be built on sand. That's the whole point of doing this. The whole point of figuring out the big picture and figuring out where the foundation is so that you can see it and change and tweak things and go, oh, cool. It's not to feel guilty or bad or like, oh my gosh, and deny it. No, the worst thing you can possibly do is if you realize your house is built on sand, is to ignore the problem. Your, the, your posts can go as deep as you want and they can be solid concrete. If the bottom is still sand, it's still going to fall. And this is what we've done in life. We've built religious systems up. They're solid concrete. We have all the words. We know all the things. The load-bearing walls are standing, but it's still built on sand. And 
storms are going to come and your house is still going to crumble. There's just going to be a lot of concrete stacked on top of each other. You don't have to listen to a word I say. But if you want to stand strong in a storm, I suggest you look at your life and ask yourself, what is my life actually based off of? Because there's a lot of people, man, their life is not based on the Word of God. Their life is based on themselves and what they want. And we're all guilty. A little bit. Ready? All guilty. I just worked a 12-hour shift. I ain't coming home folding clothes. That ain't my job. I had a two-year-old hanging on me. Don't touch me. I'm touched out. Selfish. Both sides. Selfish. That's not how God tells us to act. I can get worse. <laughs> if you want God's blessing, you got to do things God's way. You don't have to, by the way, too. You're just going to fall. You're just going to fall. See, no adult has ever gone to therapy and said, you know what, my parents just flirted too much with me. Or too, too much with each other. <laughs> well, that was a bad one. A... Goodbye. Nobody ever said my parents feel too much with each other. We laugh too much together as a family. We talk through too much stuff together. My parents let us have too many conversations about what was going on in our school. We never said that. But there's a lot of people who are in therapy right now because I talk to them. I do it. That I said my parents bought me everything I ever wanted, but they always felt really distant. I watched my parents go from liking each other to not liking each other to not standing each other. There's a lot of that kind of stuff. There's a lot of people, even in church world, especially in church world, that said, yeah, we never had those conversations in my house. We're not allowed to have those type of conversations in my house. There's a lot of pastors who say, don't talk about that stuff in your house. If you had a camera in our house to see the type of conversations that took place and take place in our house, you would be shocked. Because one of the things that we do in our house, guys, there is not a single thing that happens that is off limits in our house. So I know lots of people's drama because of it. <laughs> Everything we talk about for the next month has to do with the foundation of this fear of God that he holds the universe in his hands. He holds the Milky Way and however many galaxies there are, he's holding it. And we're very small in the middle of it. And he's like, I am begging you, don't just hear what I say, follow through. Then your life, your house, your family, your soul will be based on a solid rock and it won't falter. It won't. And there's people's lives are falling apart. Right? We got, I got up close and personal i got to watch this. And by the way, I think this is just, we decided, I decided to do this two hours before I found out my niece was going into the hospital and about four hours before we found out she passed away. But we got an up-close view of a, of a mother of all storms. When you bury a 10-year-old, that is the mother of all storms. And we got to see how it happens. The family whose house was built on a rock. There's plenty of things because my in-laws are human beings. And there's times when we have disagreed plenty. And we will more because we're people. But I got an up close personal and watched a family whose house was built on a rock go through one of the most tragic events ever and stay strong. And I've watched people's lives crumble because Johnny didn't want to go to school. And their life was worse. They faltered and fell faster and quicker because of where their life was based off of. So here's our take home. What's your foundation built on? What's it built on? I hope I gave you enough illustrations and examples to kind of look at it and go, oh, crap, good. 
Because now you can do something with it. Now you can do something with it. I honestly believe that there's people who need to take a real good, deep, hard, long look at their life and make some foundational changes to their lives during this week in this sermon series. Also, there's people who are going to learn throughout all this, like, oh, I never knew how to do this stuff. That's okay, too. I never quite knew how much the Bible talked about families and marriages and parenting and all this other stuff. And you're going to learn how to function and how to do things and how to tweak things and go, oh, okay, that's fine, too. When you figure out where your foundation is built on, you're able to judge where your soul is at and how healthy your soul is. And then you can, can move on from there, whether you're single or married or parenting or whatever else. But when you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God who created the universe and holds the galaxies in his hands loves you and cares about you, that gives you all the confidence in the world to build your foundation on him, to have a strong soul, to have a strong marriage, and to have a strong family. Let's pray. Lord, we love you so much. And we thank you that we get to do this together. We thank you for your stories in Scripture that warn us. Because, Lord, we're human beings, and we need warnings. Because we are a 